you see these commercials, everything's perfect. The perfect sunset. But there's another side that you will never see. I didn't read the complete study. It's some interesting things in here. I've learned that over the years. Whenever you see a study, definitely look at who is funding it. The minute I walk on that cruise, <laughs> I don't care. So we have been RVing for six years. Can you believe it's been no, that long? I can't. It's crazy. It's, and it's gone so fast. So quickly. And in that time, dear, we've talked about many different experiences we have, how much we love RVing. We continue to do it. However, we've also talked about some of the downsides of RVing, and we're open and very honest about that. In this video in particular, we want to address a recent study that was put out, and we kind of want to dig down a little bit deeper and bring up some things you, that study did not cover. So we've always loved to vacation. It's something that we've done a lot for years. And then in 2018, we got started in the RV lifestyle. That's a long story, but it had to do with bed bugs, but that's in other videos. So let's focus on the positives of why we love to RV first before we get into the nitty gritty of this article. So number one is really the experience of the travel. So when we used to travel, we would go by boat, by plane, by car. And in most cases, we're flying somewhere. You get there really quickly and you don't see anything on the way. So for us now with the RV, the journey is just as exciting as the destination. So you get to see some beautiful landscapes and places that we wouldn't see if we were just flying somewhere. The next thing is going to be the RV community. And you'll see a lot of people talk about the RV community. The RV community, for the most part, is pretty tight knit. Very nice people, for the most part. When you have enough people, you're going to have a couple jerks out there. <laughs> but for the most part, very nice people. And we've met some really great friends in the RV community, which we just not would not have met the way we used to travel. Right, right. Through RVing and through YouTube as well. Yeah, we have some of our closest friends. We never would have met without this. One of the most important things when you are RVing is where you're going to stay. And for many people, we stay at campgrounds. And one of the most frustrating things that we have found that's happened to us a couple of times is that you book an RV campground. It looks a certain way on the website. <laughs> And then you show up and it is like a nightmare, right? Our friend Mark Kepp from campgroundviews.com was a full-time RVer for many years and he also got caught, caught up and frustrated with that. And he has made it his life mission to change this for RVers. Right, he's really taken on a huge undertaking here. So he provides virtual tours of thousands of campgrounds. Very exciting for 2023 is will be the launch of all Oregon and Washington state parks which is phenomenal. And following that very closely will be California, Texas, New Mexico, Utah, Idaho, Tennessee, and more. Now, when we're talking about virtual tours, we're talking about like at level of a Google street view. Yep. So you are driving, driving virtually through the campground, looking at every site, looking at the amenities. And not only can you do that, if you like a certain site, you can book it right through campgroundviews.com, which is pretty awesome. This is the only source for this type of information. He currently has 65% of all federal campgrounds and launching a ton of state parks. Camper support, that's what helps this work and helps him to grow even more. I know I wanna go in and I wanna see how close is this site to the next one? Yeah. Do you have elbow room? What is it, does it look as nice as the reviews oh, we've say, had that right? to us a couple times. With our discount code, endless RVing, you get 25% off to have this tool that continues to be growing. If it saves you on one campground, because campgrounds yep. are expensive now, it paid for itself it. tenfold. So they are huge supporters of the channel. They have been now. This is their second year mm -hmm. supporting this channel. And more importantly, they were full-time RVers. They know how RVers travel. It's made for RVers. We need to all support each other. Mm -hmm. Go check them out. Their information will be below. Another positive that we love is that it's our home on wheels. For example, like we get to bring as many clothes as we want, even though Izzy gets mad because I pack too much. I bring like six pieces yeah, of I know, clothing. you bring the same shirt and you wear it all the time. Anyway, we get to bring as much as we want as long as we stay within our weight limits. But this, for example, is something that we love. We have a residential size refrigerator, so we're able to eat our food. Now, a lot of you that follow us, you know we eat mostly a plant-based diet, mostly. So we kind of bring everything we need. We don't have to rely on going out, although we do enjoy going out once in a while when we're RVing, but we cook, we have our oven, we have everything we need to be comfortable and stay healthy on the road. All right, so don't be grossed out, but this is another reason why we love it. If you go into hotels and things like that, yes, they have 
like housekeepers cleaning up and he always finds some stray hair or some like nasty thing. So I want a shower in my own shower that I know is gonna be really clean because of the person holding the camera. You have your own amenities, everything that you need. Also in the bedroom too, we started RVing as I mentioned because of bed bugs. We got bed bugs years ago from a, a trip from a hotel, brought them home. We know in here we're keeping everything clean. It's not even a worry for us. So let's get into why we are doing this video. So very recently, the RVIA, that's the RV Industry Association. If you're new to RVing, you probably have heard that. Maybe you don't know who they are or what they do. The RVIA is essentially a lobby group for the RV industry. Every new RV you get is going to have a sticker on it from yeah. the RVIA. You actually pay for that. I think Matt said it's like 140, 150 bucks. Anyway, and their job is to promote RVing in the RV industry, aka sell RVs and sell, mm -hmm. sell the RV lifestyle. So they just came out with what they call the 2023 Vacation Cost Comparison Study. I didn't read the complete study. I read what RVIA had put on their homepage. You can actually pay to be a member and read more, but some interesting things in here. The first thing we want to talk about is who did the study, who funded the study, and then we're going to talk about some of the key points of the study. So the study was commissioned by Go RVing and the RVIA, and the study was conducted by CBRE Hotels Advisory Group. And this is what they found in summary. Their average cost savings of up to 60% for a four-person travel party, while a two-person travel party saves up to an average of 46%, depending on factors such as the type of RV and type of vacation. Before we get into the details, you always want to really focus on who did the study. Because, for example, if you read a study... Who paid for the study. Who paid for, I'm sorry, <laughs> who paid for the study. If you read a study that milk is great for you when some people say it isn't, many studies of those were done by the dairy industry. Right. And, and you'll, you'll see, like expect, this is really big in the pharmaceutical companies. You right. know, certain drug or certain whatever is wonderful for you. And it was funded by the company that sells that drug. Right. right. Kind of makes right. sense. I've learned that over the years. Whenever you see a study, definitely look at who is funding it. Yeah. Now, so the, the big take away from this is that they did uh, analysis showing, like MJ said, that RV travel in, on these occasions was far cheaper, up to 60% less than traveling traditionally. We're talking about cruise regular road trip, airfare, hotel, whatever it may be, that RVing was cheaper. An effort to save time, we're going to put the link below to the RVIA write-up and you can go and you can analyze it for yourself and you can read it. But we're going to just give you kind of a little Cliff Notes version here. So RVI, I shouldn't say RVIA, the company they commissioned, they analyzed nine popular vacation destinations and they found the average savings for a four-person RV trip on per day basis between 22 and 60%. And then the average savings for a two person RV trip on per day basis between nine and 47%. That's, that's a huge gap in there. And then that's covering all types of RVs, travel trailers, fifth wheels, class A's, B's, pop-ups. I think B's was probably where they had the most savings, mm -hmm. but we have some examples of trips that they analyzed. So I'll give you two of these. So one popular destination, uh, a trip was from DC to Cape Cod. So seven days for four, it was $8,200. That's total cost for travel, including first class, rental car, and hotels. Now, first class, I mean, you don't have to travel. <laughs> Most people don't travel first class. No. Well, you, listen, you got to make this study look good, right? <laughs> okay. So that was 8201 It was dinners at Morton Steakhouse also. Right, and no, no, and no Nobu that. Sushi. Yeah. <laughs> so forty nine eighty one was the total cost for travel in a luxury class A motorhome. Now, we know probably what a lot of you are thinking, and we're going to get to that. Well, I can tell you right now, just by not traveling first class, you probably would have cut 40% off that trip. Absolutely. Easily. Yeah, fly coach, man. What's, we don't need first class. And another one, here's a big one, Dallas to the Grand Canyon. Actually, I should tell you that last one was a 39% savings, okay? Then Dallas to the Grand Canyon, this is a two week trip. 8801, total cost for travel, including airfare, rental car, and hotels. They skipped wonder, out on the uh, first class. I wonder if they rented like a Suburban. Yeah, right. Get a um, a little Fiat or something. For motorhome, 5627 So that's total cost for travel in a Class C motorhome. That was a 37% savings. So everything, you can go and read it in detail, but at the very bottom of this article, it says CBRE Hotels Advisory, which was commissioned by RVIA, meaning they were paid by our RVIA, to provide an objective comparison between the cost of a summer vacation using RVs and the cost of other types of vacations during the same time frame. 
CBRE factored in an estimated cost of RV ownership based upon published data regarding average ownership periods, residual values, annual days of use, insurance, and other costs of ownership, as well as any applicable tax benefits. Now, there is an area for members to click. Perhaps there is much more specific detail. Mm -hmm. For the free, there is no specific right. detail. Right. But we want to take this opportunity because we've been RVing, like we said, for six years. We know there's a lot of new RVers out there. And you see these commercials from GoRVing.com, which is part of RVIA. Mm -hmm. And everything's perfect. The perfect sunset, the perfect vacation, the family, everybody's always super happy. And again, it is wonderful. Correct. But there's another right. side that you will never see. And we kind of want to talk about that because this is more of the real world RVing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe us, just talk to RVers that you know, and they're likely going to tell you very similar things. So the study said they did take the cost of the RV into consideration, but those prices that I read before were specifically just for airfare and travel and things like that. But we know that there's a lot of other things that weren't included in those specific prices. And we want you to put in the comments as we're going through these, let us know. But this is to do with us. We're thinking of our thinking of ourselves, but we're talking about our situation, which I'm sure many of you have the same. The cost of the RV is a huge one. Most people are not going and just slapping down, you know, full payment in cash to buy an RV. Most people have a monthly payment. Yeah, they're quite and expensive RVs. Yes, depending on what you get, especially now and the last couple of years, they've been really pricey. So that has to be, at least we think, incorporated into that cost. Yeah, when we first bought our trailer in 2018, it was what, $23,000? Mm -hmm. That same trailer is probably pushing almost $40,000 yeah. now, right? Yeah. Now time has passed, of course, but it's gone up a lot. So yeah, that's a, you can take a lot of vacations for a cost yes. of an RV. Now we're just talking about buying new. Of course you can buy used, but even used RVs are not mm -hmm. cheap. You're talking probably 15, 20, $25,000. It's not cheap. Another thing too is most people know, maybe COVID was a little different, but RVs are depreciating assets. We know they that. A lot of depreciation. A lot. The second you drive that thing off the lot, it drops a lot. Like I said, in COVID, people were getting more than they paid, but that was a very different time. So let's talk about the second thing that is a really big cost. It's going to be the cost of maintenance and the cost of repairs. And I we specifically broke that down to two things, right? Maintenance is stuff that has to be done all the time. Stuff that you should be doing if you want to save yourself a lot of money. We're talking about oil changes if you have motorized, roof seals, body seals, mm -hmm. tires, greasing the chassis, greasing your bearings, just everything that goes on with owning an RV, keeping the seals on your slides if you have them lubed, all that kind of stuff. There's, there's a whole, look at the whole video about that. But that's not only a lot of time, there's cost in buy those materials if you do it yourself. There's way more cost if you have somebody else right. paying for it. And the next thing on that is going to be repairs. And repairs are things that you can't, I consider it things that, that I can't do. That's that's a repair. And we do some things, you, yeah. you'll do things that, but yes, a lot of times, especially this last year, if you've been watching us, you know Nelly has been in the shop quite a few times. That really costs. Now, yes, we have a wholesale warranty mm -hmm. policy, but you're still paying out of pocket, you know, for deductibles and yeah. things like the things that, you know, may not be covered depending on the policy that you have, but it adds up. So where we live, the average cost per hour for RV shop is $180 per yeah. hour. If you have a diesel motorhome, it's $250 an hour. Right. We're in New Jersey. $250 if you don't know. an hour. Yeah. That's at least one night in a hotel, right? Yeah. And yeah. I could tell you nothing is ever done in one hour. It's usually a minimum <laughs> of like four, at like least. when you go in. So it, it's expensive. It's a reality. And, and we want you to know what that reality is. The next cost is going to be cost of insurance. So you can't drive one of these things around without being insured. I mean, I guess you could, but you know, it could be a big problem. I believe trail, you don't have to have insurance. I don't think so. It would be very foolish not to. Right. But a right. motorhome, you have but, to have insurance. But yeah, insured. for any motorhome, you need to have that. And that can be upwards to a few thousand dollars a year. It could be many thousand dollars. Right. To men, depending on what you have and where you're located, where you live. Yep. I know for us, it's probably on the higher end. I think we're probably around 2000 a year. And you know, our motorhome is in motorhome world. It, this is a modest, modest motorhome. Yeah, yeah. If we had something that was way more expensive, we'd probably be paying, you know, 10,000, yeah. 8,000. I don't know. You also have the cost of registration, whether that's mm -hmm. yearly or every four years. And I know some states like Virginia, they charge you a tax on the value of your property every year. Right. So for example, if our motorhome is valued 
at $100,000, we have to pay a tax on personal property tax on that every single year if you live in the state of Virginia, except if you're in Prince County. One, I the one county. Prince George yeah. County. And, and we love Virginia, and we had actually considered that as a as a home base in and the future, that, but like, we yeah, heard no. that. But that that is kind of crazy. Yeah, anybody <laughs> from Virginia, and do you get have an RV, do you get taxed on it? Put in the comments below. Let us know. What, what do you pay on those taxes? Next one is a big one, too. That something, when we first started, we didn't even think about is the cost of storage. Where we are now, we are able to, you know, when we live in New Jersey, we're able to keep our motorhome on our property. We have a driveway that is able to fit it. But, but just before you get into it, yeah. how much should it cost us to pave our drive? Well, to widen our driveway, yeah. pave our driveway, yeah. set up electric. It was over $10,000, right? right? right. That, just that's a that. lot of money. So, yeah. so when we first started, we had a travel trailer. There was no way we would get the travel trailer up here. We live on a very tight road. So we had to get storage. And that, I remember when Izzy called me when we first started, he told me how much it was going to cost per month for storage. I couldn't believe Probably it. way more now because yeah. that was 2018. Right, right. And if you're new, even if you're not, sometimes you, you may forget this. This is something that we never, ever considered until we actually started getting out there and going on vacations. Yeah, everything is slower when you RV. The reality is there's a lot of full-time RVers. Most RVers, the vast majority of RVers are not full-timers. Right. They are weekend warriors. They RV a couple of times a year. When we talk about RV travel, everything takes longer. So for example, we are going down to Nashville later this summer. We have allocated five days of travel from New Jersey down to Nashville. So about two and a half going down and two full coming back. So almost five days. Now those five days, we wouldn't have to use right. if we were doing air freight. Like, Air travel is probably two and a half hours right. down there. Quick, way quick less jet. fatiguing. Mm -hmm. Reality, way less expensive. And I'll tell you why. I have to take off of work. Now, I have vacation time. But if you're going to go monetary wise, every day that I'm using is costing money, right? Although right. I'm getting paid for it, I could be using that for something else. If you own your own business, whatever. It could be a couple hundred dollars a day. It could be many thousand dollars a day, depending on how much you are traveling. Remember, you see like big corporate businesses, they don't. RV travel, they private jet they, or they, they jet places because right. time is money. But again, you know, on the on the flip side, this is all true. But again, you're not getting the beauty of that trip. And to me, that's worth it. But yes, this is something people don't think about. Like if you're you live in the Northeast and you're driving down to Florida, you're going to need a few days to do that. The last point is not really one of monetary value, although we can be. But this is, again, our experience. When we go on an RV trip, we're never really off. Like you can never turn off 100 percent because there's always stuff going on. You're running the hotel, basically. Correct. <laughs> you are the management, you are the repairman. employee, the repairman, yes. and the customer yeah. all at once. Versus, we're going on a cruise in November. The minute I walk on that cruise, <laughs> I don't care. I'm the customer. <laughs> this is your problem. I want but, food. I want to be clean. You just said that. I was going to say, put in the comments below, where do you think the first place Izzy goes when yeah. he walks on that ship? Yeah, I'm going right to the food court. The buffet. When you leave your room, it gets cleaned up. They make the little the little animals the out of the towel. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You go by I'll the make, pool, people bring you drinks. I'll it's awesome. I'll make you towel animals on our, on our trip this week. But in all seriousness, you know, when we go to hotels or different places, you don't have to worry about that. Right. I feel we're really on vacation. That, again, that's not saying we don't love RVing, but again, when you own an RV, you're doing things for yourself. Mm -hmm. We love RVing. We love every form of travel, and we've been RVing for six years, and we absolutely love it, and no plans to stop by any means. It's only going to increase, but with all the traveling we've done over the years, flights, cruises, by car, RVing, by far for us has been the most expensive. Yeah, absolutely. We did this video because I saw that article, I read it, and I was like, we want people to understand there's another side to it. And we just want you to be aware. We want people to RV. We love the RV industry. We love RVing, but just so people don't get caught in a place. Just be prepared for right. it. Right. So in the comments below, let us know, are you a new RVer? Are you a veteran RVer? What has been your experience? Does anything in this video resonate true to you? If we missed anything, let us know. Put it in the comments below. We read it, but more importantly, other RVers read it. And that's the most important. If you like videos like this, to the left of us, we're going to put our RV news playlist. We'll put our RV tours playlist. And for myself and MJ, it's a journey of a lifetime. And we'll see, see you on, on the, the road. road.